Hi, this is Christine Arilo with The Flower Factor, and I heard a rumor that you were getting married. Congratulations, this is so exciting from one bride or former bride to another. Get ready for just a magical adventure, both in planning your wedding and having your wedding, and really for what I know will be a fabulous marriage. And if you're anything like most brides, you are feeling a lot of pressure right now. Probably a lot of information coming your way. Everyone has an opinion. Your mother, your grandmother, the baker. They all have an opinion for you. It's a lot of pressure. And you love them for that. Thank you. But if you let all that information and all that, um, that stuff come at you, you are just going to continue to be overwhelmed. So I have some secrets that I'm going to share with you called the five eyes. And the five eyes are the five eyes that I use when making my decisions about the flowers that I chose for my wedding day, as well as pretty much every decision that I made, including my flowers. So you ready? Okay. I number one is inspiration. Here's the thing, before you even get started on deciding what kind of flowers that you want or how many flowers you should have, you have to start with inspiration. The word inspiration means in spirit, inspired, in spirit. And you are about to join your spirit with this other person's spirit. You are about to have a hopefully very spirited occasion. So you want to start with what's in your heart. What are the feelings and the emotions that you want these flowers to convey, to hold, to provoke in other people? Feelings and emotions. Inspiration. Second number I is ideas. Get lots of them. Lots and lots and lots of ideas. You can get them from your florist. You can get them from your floral designer. You can get them from Jean and from Kelly here on our aboutflowers.com website. And ideas are good. You want lots of them. Because they know things, these experts, they know things that you don't know. They may know, know like different flower combinations and how to kind of do cool different things. You want those ideas. What you don't want are the opinions. And that's where everyone from your Aunt Gertrude to you know, your neighbor next door is going to have an opinion. Keep the ideas. Leave the opinions to the side. So that brings us to third, the third I, which is intuition. And this is about you trusting you, trusting inside of you. If you were to get quiet and imagine what it is that you really want, what does your inner wisdom say? You're going to have a lot of people telling you what to do. And like I number two, ideas, you want those ideas. But at the end of the day, you have to come back here and listen to your intuition. This will save you a lot of grief and create a lot of joy if you remember this one. Trust yourself. Really, really trust yourself. The fourth I, mm, I love this one. It is, what does my other I want? <laughs> What's important to him? Important to him, important to the other I, that's fourth I. So you might go to your partner and if you sit down and you ask him, well, what kind of flowers do you want? He may look at you and be like, uh, I don't know. Don't ask him that question unless he spends a lot of time at the botanical gardens. He probably doesn't have a flower preference and it's only going to end you up in a fight. Go to him with the question, the eye of importance. So what is important to you? Maybe he'll have something, maybe he won't. But you can then go on to question number two. Well, is there anything that you don't like about flowers or colors that I should know? That's a good question. Listen. The third question I would ask would be, so is there anyone important, again remember, important to you that's going to be at the wedding that you want to make sure we honor with flowers? Oh, that might spark him up, open up his heart. Great. And then the fourth question would be, okay, great, do you have any ideas that you want to share with me? Yes or no? Great. Okay, you just had all the information you, you needed to know. You know what's now important to him. And that's where you're going to come back to the fifth eye. You're going to have your inspiration. You're going to have your ideas. You're going to have your intuition. You're going to have what's important to your partner. And then you're going to come back here and ask, what's important to me? What do I want? You know, it may be that this season red flowers are all the rage. But at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. What matters is what's in your heart. 
and what it is that you want to create for yourself and this person who you're about to spend, you know, the rest of your life with. For me, I really wanted to invoke the feelings of love and purity and peace. And so I chose a cow lily. That's what I carried when I got married. And so now every time I see a cow lily, just like this one, I remember that love that my guy Noah and I shared on that day with ourselves and with our family. And it reminds me, it brings me back to that place because I started with inspiration. And I got an idea for my florist. And then I followed through on my intuition. Even though calla lilies were so not the hot ones that season, asked my partner what he wanted, what was important to him, and then made my choice. So I wish you so much love on not only your wedding day, but also your marriage. And knowing that if you act from your heart in the flower choices that you make, and in every choice that you make, you will end up with more love in your life. I look forward to seeing you here throughout the year at aboutflowers.com with so many more tips on how to use flowers to create more love in your life.